action is over. These fighters are in tremendous physical condition. The Mountain Warrior, Shane Cameron, is it his coming out party? Is it the end of the era for David Tour? That's what this fight's all about. It is the fight of the century. Round one, scheduled for 12. The champion decked out in white. The challenger, David Tour, in black trunks. So far, Shane is doing what most people thought, boxing from the outside. Tour misses his first left hand offering. Shane lands his first left hook. Cameron jabs him off again. Catches him on the left hook. David hasn't landed a punch yet. Shane's right hand's a little bit low. He's got to get it up high because the left hook is the weapon for David Tua. We'll look for that. David is very worked up a great sweat, so he's ready to go. But he's a very cool customer here in the early going. He's not, he's not panicking. He's not pushing the fight. There's the left hook on the inside. He's got such a great chin, he's walking up, he's taking the fight too, Shane, which we expected. But now we just got to wait and see what happens. There's the first lift, and it hurt Shane a little. Uh, it caught him, and it caught his attention. But remember, Shane, when he first started out training in the same camp with David and has sparred with him, he knows this power. Can he hold up against the power? There's the left hand again, which grazes across the eyes of Shane Cameron. Shane faints, throws his left hook, and whistles past the nose of David. Double jab, right hand, sails over the head of David. The Tuminator, they call him now, has the left hand. You know, he's landed the left hook three times. Right hand on the left hook by Tua here in round number one. Shane has already felt the power, and you can see a little wealth coming up by the right eye. Two is very methodical, just throwing good, good, precise punches. He's giving away some four inches in uh, height to this guy. He's four kilograms heavier, but he's at the lightest weight that he's been in years. David Tour has lost some 26 kilo kilograms, so he's in great physical condition for this fight. There is no tomorrow for David Tour. Shane Cameron, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. David faints, shows nice head movement, which makes it hard for Shane to hit him coming in. Shane touches him up a couple of times, and David whistles the left hook by him again. You know, this Bruce McTavish stays back. He's one of the very best referees in the world. Oh, he caught him! And he got him again! Shane's ready to go! And he's down in round one! Shane's in a heap of trouble! He won't be able to recover from this! He's trying to get up too quick! He comes forward! McTavish will give him all the time in the world! David catches him! It's gonna be a front drop lock! Down he goes again! Oh, that's a disqualification! But I'm just saying, he's hitting him while he's on the floor. Four and five and six and seven. He's got the eight count. He brings his hands up. He's called timeout. Bruce McTavish has called timeout. And we're at the very end of the round. So it didn't take long. A lot of the questions have already been answered. The power of Tui is still there, and Shane won't last long with him. He can't recover from those two big shots. That was a knockout. The fight was over. There was no response by Cameron. But this, this, that's the first knockdown. The second knockdown, he hit him twice while he was on his knees. Now look. Oh, that's the first one still. He's down. Yeah, he didn't, he, you see this second knockdown, he hits him while he's on the floor twice. Look at that. On the floor, on the floor. Yeah, he does. Now, Bruce McTavish called timeout at the very tail end of the round. I don't know why. But he did hit him down twice, and it could have been a disqualification. Cedric Kushner was going wild in the corner saying the fight was over. This is the David Tua that we all thought would have come to fight Lennox Lewis. Where was he? Big difference in the skills of Shane and Lennox. Shane's eyes are both puffy. And now let's see if David can keep the pressure on him. He knows what he can do. Shane backing off immediately. He's trying to jab. Gets hit again with a right hand. Left hook. He's not going to last this round. David's on him. He's covering. The referee stops the fight. It's all over. A second round knockout victory 
and Shane is hurt. That shows you David Tua is back. My God, that was devastating. But listen, I've got, I've got look, he's a friend of mine, Bruce McTavish, but I've got to question the referee. He didn't take too many punches there. Too, too many punches. Shane took at least seven or eight clean blows. McTavish, of course, didn't want to stop it too quick, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take the judgment away from the referee in this particular case. I don't know what went on with the two punches when he was on his knee. A little bit of controversy in there. But there's no question it was academic. David Tua pummeled this guy and did what he has to do to jump back on the scene. That's a brilliant knockout victory for David Tua. That's devastating. Look, I, like I said, obviously I know Lennox Lewis is different, but if that kind of guy came out against Lennox Lewis, who knows what could have happened? Uh, he was cool in the easy, uh, early going of the fight. And, I mean, he just really devastated. He's David over there saying, you know, now this shows the sportsmanship of the two guys. Well, nobody's ever down on what a gentleman David Tool is. My heart goes out to Shane because I know how hard he worked to get ready for this fight. He's a wonderful guy. Guy raised in the shadows of Montfucker for... Naki. The mountain warrior might have been from the mountains, but he wasn't the warrior tonight. It wasn't his night. David Tua's